everyone. Welcome to Module One: Meta Heuristics Introduction to AI. I want to give you a short overview of what we're going to do in Module One.、Um, you will watch lectures on meta heuristics, focusing specifically on the traveling salesman problem, and that is the focus of our homework assignment, which I'll elaborate later. You will also watch、uh, a lecture on simulated in、uh, kneeling. Um, and please pay attention to the algorithm because you will have to create the pseudo code and also the flowchart、uh, for simulated annealing. Also, there's a lecture on genetic algorithm. Again, you will create pseudo code and flowchart for、um, genetic algorithm based on the lectures. So pay attention to these particular specifics. On Thursday,、um, you will have to turn in a Python assignment that's due end of Thursday. There、uh, is a lecture on Python basics. I believe it's on data types and、uh, loops, maybe. And so the assignment is for you to practice those skills that you see in the lecture. On Sunday,、uh, the meta heuristic assignment is due. So that is the pseudo code and flowchart for simulated annealing. Genetic genetic algorithm apply to the traveling salesman problem. I encourage you to get help by email with the discussion board, or come visit me in office hours.、Uh, the office hours are available by appointment only.、Uh, for details, please go back and see announcement from、uh, module zero. Everything that you need. For the homework problem is given in the lectures, so I'm not going to repeat、uh, the instructions here. However, I feel like、uh, um, I need to elaborate a little bit about the definition of the travel traveling salesman problem、uh, as defined for the assignment. So here is the traveling salesman problem:、uh, given a list of cities and the distances between each pair of cities. What is the shortest possible route that visits each city exactly once and returns to the origin city?、Um, I want you to make these assum ass assumptions for the、uh, module one assignment. We are going to assume that there is only one salesman. We are also going to assume the list of cities is constant, so you don't have to model that as a variable. So. Let's say we all have five cities. We're not going to change the number of cities. The distances are also known, given, and constant, meaning that you don't have to model、uh, the distances as variables. You are going to create a flowchart using the BPMN notation. So this is what a BPMN and、uh, flowchart might look like. I'm going to give you a little bit of overview because there's no lecture on flow charting, so I'll give you a little bit of、um, basic information, and I'll also explain what I expect from you. So here's me with one of the co-founders of BPMN, who I met at a conference, Alistair、uh, Barrels. He、uh, was a very active founder. He created a lot of the notations that we are going to see. So why do we use flow charting? We use technology to automate processes and make them more efficient.、Uh, but before we can automate a process, we also have to understand the process. Flow charting provides an easy to understand way to do that. When do we use it? We use it a lot in software development, business process modeling, decision process modeling. The picture is a, a worth a thousand words. It's just so much easier to understand. By both technical and non-technical people,、um, so for、uh, any kind of coding assignment, it's always very helpful to draw a flowchart. Even if it's not on a piece of paper, you should always have a flowchart in your head, so you know exactly what you're coding. It's like having a blueprint before building a house. These are the conventional flowcharting symbols that we're going to use in BPMN notation. Um, every flowchart should start and end with this、uh, start and end symbol.、Um, you can model input or output using、um, this uh, parallelogram. Uh, it's usually labeled with a noun. 
the rectangular shape is the process symbol. It's used to represent any type of function or action. The symbol may be used to represent one step of a sequence or steps. It's usually labeled with a verb. The flow symbol indicates movement to the next operation. The decision symbol is a junction where a decision must be made. Uh, I usually call this the decision diamond. D is for decision, D is for diamond. The decision returns either true or false. It's usually labeled with a question. Here is a, a flowchart of the traveling salesman problem. You can start see the star um, symbol, and then uh, we randomly initialize the traveling solution as the current solution. Let's say, um, if we go to city one, city two, city three, city four, city five in that sequence, then that is a, an initial solution. And then what we want to do is calculate the distances, the total distance based on that solution and compare it to the current best solution. If it's good, if it's better than the, uh, the best solution that we have currently, then we'll replace the best solution with current solution. Um, if not, we're going to go back. Uh, if not, we're going to see have we reached the maximum number of trials because re uh, remember that this is a heuristic problem. Well, traveling salesman problem is an NPR problem, which means that uh, it usually takes forever to find the, the um, absolutely bad solution. So sometimes it's impossible to find. So we have to have a stopping point which is the maximum number of trials. So if we have reached that maximum number of trials, if we try so many times, then we're just going to stop. If we haven't gone to the maximum, maybe we'll try another time and, and generate another solution. And then we, again, we compare it to the current solution, uh, the current best solution, and see if it's uh, better or not. If it's better, then we'll, again, uh, announce... Um, declare the current solution as the best solution. Otherwise, we're just going to iterate until we get to the end. Here's a, a, a checklist I'm going to use to check if your flowchart is good or not. So these are the questions I'm going to ask. Are all of the process steps connected to one another directly or indirectly? Is there only one star and one end? You shouldn't have multiple starts. Um, you shouldn't have um, a missing star or missing end. There should be exactly one star and exactly one end. Is every process labeled with a verb or action? Is every input-output parallelogram labeled with a noun or nouns? Is every decision diamond labeled with a question? Each decision must have at least two arms and no more than a handful. A decision is a decision only if there are different paths for different decision outcomes. If the resulting path is the same, regardless of the decision outcome, then model the step as a process, not a decision. Are the arrow lines annotated unidirectionally, meaning do they all go in the same direction? Are all the arrows going in the same general direction? Anything against the traffic flow in a, a non-logical way? When a symbol has more than one arrow coming out of it, can the reader determine which one to follow? Can the reader clearly go from the start to the end without a GPS? And again, are all the symbols clearly labeled? Is there anything missing a label? Now let's take a look at this diagram for the traveling uh, salesman's problem. And I want you to compare uh, a diagram like this to this checklist and see how many, um, how many um, sort of uh, criteria uh, are missing here, right? So for example, are all the process steps connected to one another directly or indirectly? Is there only one star and one end? I see a star, but I don't see an end. So something is missing here. A decision is only a decision if there are different paths coming out of it. So you will see that there are actually two decision diamonds here. 
one has two arrows coming out, but an, the second one only has one arrow coming out of it. So that is problematic because the decision needs to have at least two arms coming out of it. Every arrow, especially the diamonds, the arrows have to be um, labeled so I know which direction to go. If you see the first diamond has two arrows coming out of it, but the first one is uh, labeled as yes, but the second one is missing a label. So that is problematic. All the processes have to eventually go to the end. We do have an orphan um, process over here, replace best solution with current best solution. And after that, I don't know where else to go. You know, I need to be able to continue the flowchart until I get to the end. So something is missing over there. So I want you to use this flowchart to check your own work before you turn it in. Good luck with your uh, module one assignment. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions.